Castro here from Monsters.org and we're at my new home, Da Nang, Vietnam. Oh man, it's so damn cool. Yeah, it's the best, Da Nang is really good. Uh, the food, the beach, everything has been really cool. I can't wait to show you and the world, everybody, how cool this place really is. I need some coffee, I need some lunch. Let's do this. This cafe has an outdoor setting just like many other cafes uh, around here in this area in Vietnam in general. It's this cool little uh, baby stool sort of outdoor setting. What locals tend to do is just come out and just chill out on the street like this night and day. Uh, it's a very street life here. If it's a restaurant they'll still have seats outdoors so it's like street food almost like every place is like street food. So. You can see why I would love this place so much, right? We're here at Co Cafe, very local, nice vibe. I like the interior, it's a bit rough around the edges. I like that, you know, very vintage. So we're gonna try the classic Vietnamese coffee that originally comes from Hanoi, but now it's just absolutely everywhere. It's the egg coffee. Let's do this. First thing you gotta do is just get a spoonful of this. Ooh, the glass is hot. Just get a spoonful first. Mm. Oh yeah. Beautiful, sweet egginess. What he does, he separates the egg yolk from the, the egg white and then he would whisk them up separately, right? And I'm pretty sure I saw him put honey in the egg yolks. Get a bit of the coffee from behind the counter, put it on the stove, you know, to heat it up, and then he put the two separate containers, you know, the one with the egg yolk, the one with the egg white, he combined them into one container, re whisked that. and just poured it into the cup, put the coffee on top, going straight under. I mean, what a beautiful creation, honestly, and like, mm. Yeah. Mm. That condensed milk flavor combined with the egg, I mean, so good, and the coffee is so bitter, you know, so that's the perfect balance that this has, is that really sweet, contrasted with that, mm, that roasted bitterness of that Vietnamese coffee that just slow drips there for ages, what a creation. That beautiful cloud. Mm. So damn fluffy. Little egg cloud. Mm. This is where the real joy comes in. Mm. Sort of slightly salty, sweet fluff. And then you just get this bitter nut coming underneath. Wow. It's, oh. it's really a mouthful of joy. Mm. It's one of those things that you have it. And then you're just like, ah, I want more. You get this itch in your jaw, you're just like, ah, oh, let's go in for the next one. Mm. Ah, this is something that I can smash like so easily. Check out the little bath it comes in. It has its own little hot water bath. Wow, so cute. 
introducing the epicest bridge you've ever seen. Check out the Da Nang Bridge. So one reason why this city is so damn cool is because one half of it is on the riverside. As you can see, some boats going in and out with some epic <laughs> bridges. I can't wait to show you guys this during night time. It's up the chain. And then the other half of the city is on the beach. Really nice waves, uh, right along the mountains. Uh, it's, it's just epic, you know? A destination soon to be number one on the top 10 places to visit in the world, straight up. We're at Bato restaurant and it's like the bottom ground of an apartment block that seems to be people living here, like a family, it's very family oriented, loving the vibe. Uh, so this layout seems to be very common here in Vietnam and in Da Nang, just in general. I really like the vibes, it seems like mama and papa shop, the menu is really cool. So I'm going to show you two traditional Vietnamese dishes that you might not know of, but are definitely worth trying. Let's do it. Right. Coconut juice has arrived. Yeah. So sweet. Sour. It's probably more sweet than sour to be honest. So I'm definitely not complaining about that. Yummy coconut flavor. Here's the first dish, Khao Lao. Big thick wheat flour noodles. At the table side condiments. A little bit of oil and some chili. Just put that right on top of that. Just give it a bit of a mixy mixy because underneath there is just a tad bit of soup. Got big chunks of pork, pork fat, some lettuce, some mint. It's all happening here. Try the noodles first, a little bit of mint and that pork fat in there. Mm. The noodles are so gummy, very thick. You have to chew and chew. It's good, I love this sort of texture. I don't like when noodles are too soft, you know? So, this type of noodle, I definitely, I romp with that. The little pork skin was, was up the chain, like look at the crunch on this. Mm. Even with all the liquid in there, there's still little crunchy golden nuggets of joy. Alright, what is this? Opa! Then we got some, what looks like barbecued pork. A lot of meat on it, not so much fat. Yummy. Barbecue essence. Good carrot, some cucumber. Don't get too greedy with the salads now, and you roll. Put a bit of pressure down, roll that down into a lovely cylinder, and voila! Come on! How cool was that? She just made it for me. She knew I wasn't gonna do that. I had no intentions of putting the pancake in a rice paper and rolling it. But that's obviously what you do here. So, what you gotta do, dunk it into this gravy first. It got a lot louder in here. Texture in there, layer after layer of crunch. It is crunching. The pancake crunching through fresh cucumber, fresh bean sprouts. Got this deep fried little prawn that's super salty in there. 
I have to go in for the second one. Mm. And that gravy, umami, meaty, pork bean, oily dressing that just covers everything. It's just like the perfect little dunking sauce. Exactly what this sort of dish needed. Ah, it's genius. I'm gonna attempt to do the rolling of the pancake. a very nice traditional meal so many crunchy things yummy things very happy with that if you like what you watch hit the subscribe button hit the like and i'll see you very soon here in the one more time bye bye